Well, my dear heart dwellers, the Lord is truly with us to instruct and encourage. Tonight I had beautiful worship time with him. And again, we were dancing above the earth, and it seemed like the angels were upholding a dance floor in the stars. Terry McAlman was playing his wonderful, wonderful worship songs. And that's just the place we were in. I was so totally in love with him and so totally in worship in the purest and sweetest sense. There's nothing carnal about communing with God. It's totally holy. But there's something really beautiful and warm about his embrace. It just brings forth the sweetness and kindness of his person. Just like when we love a child, we want to embrace them. It's the same kind of feeling. There's just so much love there, and truly we are his children and his soon-to-be bride. So I began my time with him tonight by saying, Oh, my precious Lord, how kind of you to visit me in this special way tonight. You know too well how I've been floundering these last few days, even weeks, and have missed your tender company so much. Not that you withheld anything. Rather, I have put so many other things before you. How grievous for us both. He began, Yes, you have indeed had a plate full of worldly cares. But now we have had at least a few moments, time apart. And indeed, I need to continue to instruct those who love to dwell in my heart. First, I want you to share with them what's been on your heart all day. I want to explain in a bit more depth the happenings with Ezekiel and what is to be expected after the very special healing of the consent of his will to do the work Jesus has for him. That particular night when things came to a head, I think that was uh, two nights ago, Jesus called the question, Will you or will you not carry this cross? And Ezekiel repented of reluctance and sloth, and so did I. And that very night, he did indeed receive a major healing, body, soul, and spirit. And in essence, the Lord told him to rise, get up, and walk. And so he did. Straight to his guitar, where a new song came forth, even as it is written, sing a new song to the Lord and play skillfully with a shout of joy. That's Psalm 33.3. And there may be lyrics to that song yet. We're not sure. And so now we're both walking in that victory. Victory over our self-will, self-pity, and sloth. And no one can take that victory from us if we maintain it. Nonetheless, when he received that touch from the Lord, it came on the heels of an attack from two Satanists that visit our channel. The Lord allowed their death assignments to touch down. Theirs and many others who have been after us for a very long time. And he used it as an occasion of breaking and bringing to the surface things that must be emptied from our vessels before they can be filled with the new wine. That was a victory over our flesh for us and came with a blessing of deliverance from a serious body condition but that does not guarantee that we will not be attacked again and again and again. And with each attack, we're learning more about the enemy's tactics, and we're sharing that new-to-us understanding with you. And during the prayers for deliverance and healing, the Lord made it very clear to us that he was not going to allow Ezekiel to die from these attacks, but he would leave behind a small vestige of suffering to be used for a fast offering when critical situations come up. And one such situation did indeed come up. And again, our enemies sent a death curse and tried in another way to cause heart failure. And the Lord delivered him from that, along with that he was troubled in his intestines again for a very brief period of time. Now, at the same time that this was happening, we have a very dear heart dweller and spiritual family member whose wife is in ICU in critical condition. 
with kidney failure and other life-threatening malfunctions. And Ezekiel committed to a nine-day cycle of prayer for her. And those special offerings to the Lord almost always come with difficult events on the seventh day. And that's when the second attack against his life took place. This is after we posted his song, in fact, the same day. I'm telling you this because when the Lord heals you, and Ezekiel did receive a substantial healing, both in body and soul, because everything is functioning better than it ever has. The Lord may leave a sliver of that suffering for another time when he has dire need of intercession with sacrifices. And at that time, you may be tempted to think, I've lost my healing, or I never was healed. Please don't swallow that lie. You didn't lose that healing, but the Lord allowed a recurrence for his own purposes. After every healing, we must allow the healing to do its complete work while we rest in the Lord for a period, and we must walk in that healing. It may also be necessary that additional prayers are needed because some healings have their origins in trauma from childhood and the past, and they take time to heal. We're like onions, so to speak. Sometimes there are several layers that must be healed before the Lord gets down to the point of entry of the demon of infirmity or the incident that caused it. And more often than not, that is connected to some event from the past that must be forgiven. It truly is complex, but as we learn more, we'll share it with you. So you may come under attack from your enemies again and again and again, and the same symptoms may manifest. But after deliverance from that attack, you will see that normal health returns to you. The point is, Satan doesn't give up ground easily. He will send his goons to cause more trouble in the same area, trying to get you to give up your faith and fall into serious unbelief. Dear ones, you may get a wonderful healing, but then come under attack again. You have to fight to keep that healing. We are also finding out that sickness exists in three places, your body, your spirit, and your soul. So when the Lord heals you, he must put you back together again in order that the three layers are once more perfectly united, along with the healing of all three parts. When an injury happens, it bursts through all three layers, causing them to be twisted and compacted and contorted and confused. No longer do they lay flat, one on top of the other in perfect synchronization. Rather, now they are knotted up and therefore have to be separated and healed separately, then rejoined. This is something only the Lord can do. Jesus, did you have something to add? I do, he said. This calls for patient endurance and faith. When I heal you, you may manifest total or partial healing, depending on what was best for your soul. Remember, I prayed twice for the blind man to see. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then he spit on the man's eyes and placed his hands on him. Can you see anything? he asked. The man looked up and said, I can see the people, but they look like trees walking around. Once again, Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes, and when he opened them, his sight was restored, and he could see everything clearly. That's Mark 8.23. Jesus continued, This I did deliberately to show you that continued prayer is necessary for some conditions. It is one thing for me to pray, and a miracle manifests, and quite another for my creation to pray, whose faith is imperfect, and a miracle to manifest. Nonetheless, it can be done according to your faith, and this is where I am leading all of you. A soul must be ready to be healed. The circumstance that allowed that cross to manifest must run its course, and when it does, 
The sickness, too, can be healed. Then the soul must walk in what I have done, even with repeated attacks against it, both in body and mind. They must walk in faith. This is the point where most lose their healings. My children, indeed, you must fight to keep your healing. You will continually be assaulted with lying symptoms. Even attacks against the vessel I used will be insinuated to undermine the healing. If you can just continue to keep your eyes on me, like the woman who touched my garment, Continue to touch my garment and firmly refute every accusation that you were not healed. Then there are open doors that allow the sickness back in. There are many among you who have brought these sicknesses upon yourselves because of your critical attitude towards your brothers and sisters. Your healing will not last unless you are in an all-out war against your pride which allows you to raise your head above others and look down upon them with judgment. This is the major door for sickness, continual negative judgments against others. The healing needs to begin with you in order for an external healing to be totally effective. I do not want to discourage you, my very precious ones, but I must speak the truth to you or you will be continually frustrated with your results. Judgment opens the door for demons. Demons bring sickness, and I cannot keep a door closed that you are continually opening. I will reveal to you what it is like to walk in victory, but then you must maintain it by holiness of heart and mind. And what Claire has said about leaving a vestige behind or allowing a very small portion to manifest is absolutely true. But if it is my doing, it will go away after my ends are accomplished, unless you know that this illness is allowed because you've offered yourself to me without conditions, and we've agreed upon it, in which case symptoms will be more severe at certain times but then they will decrease. There is nothing I have more compassion for than those who have chosen to suffer voluntarily because they love others enough to carry that cross I have offered them. This is profoundly pleasing to me, and with such souls I commune and reveal secrets. This teaching is sorely neglected and misunderstood in modern Christianity. And due to that, you have monumental depression among those who are afflicted and not healed. Guilt weighs them down day after day as they cry out, Why, Lord, have you not healed me? What have I done? What are my sins that deserve such punishment? They live guilt-ridden lives, believing that they have no faith, that their devotion and belief in me is at fault, when I would have them know that they are intercessors with golden censers whose fragrance reaches the Father's throne. In this way they would live in peace and happiness rather than living full of doubts, bitterness, and depression, and feeling bankrupt with nothing to contribute in the church. Nothing could be further from the truth. While this subject of healing is deep and wide, I wish for you all to study these messages and understand the true dynamics behind healing and walking in it. I want you to understand how you will be assaulted with lies in vulnerable moments, lies that are deliberately tailored to derail your faith and cause you to fall into despair. If you are walking in good health, rejoice and use your body to serve me and not your own pleasures. If you are bedridden or wheelchair bound, rejoice. Your prayers ascend to heaven with every pain you suffer. Simply cry out to me, my beloved ones. Cry out, O oh God, heal her. O oh God, help him. O oh God, mercy. Yes, these are powerful prayers 
you can use any time you see suffering. Bring it to me, my suffering servants, and truly I will respond to your pleas. You may not see the healing or comfort I bring to those you pray for, but I promise you I will act in accordance with what is best for your soul. The rest of you who walk in good health, do not waste what you've been given. See to it that you devote yourselves to the building up of my kingdom and not the kingdoms of this world. Do what you can, while you can, because you too may have some heavy crosses to carry. Right now in this world there is so much need for souls to offer themselves for others. So many are perishing, even as we speak. None of you has an adequate concept of my mercy, and neither do you realize the power of your prayers and supplications. If you did, you would devote much more time to it. I have given each of you talents. I have led you and taught you, and many, many of you are walking in my will for your lives and really don't recognize that. How will you know? When you feel deeply satisfied with something you've just done, that will be an indicator. It is a piece of soul that cries out, Truly, I have found my gift from God. Yet you may not acknowledge that. I'm giving you a clue here. Pay attention. When you feel that profound peace after doing something, you will know it was my will for you. If you feel jubilation over an accomplishment, but unrest in your soul, you can be fairly sure that what you were doing was not my calling in your life, but your own will. In those things the glory fades quickly, and a certain undefined emptiness takes its place within you. Whereas the things you did for me are like burning embers, emitting a warm glow as you look back on them, accompanied by a certain sense of satisfaction and peace. In heaven they will be seen as brilliant diamonds adorning your crown. Press in, my most beloved body, press in. The rewards are both for now and forevermore.